Hello YouTube, let's talk about a couple of upcoming AEW wrestling card series. We're definitely going to be talking about some more of these things here coming up on the channel, especially as we start getting into the checklist and also we'll look into some WWE ones, kind of bringing things back onto the channel. There'll be some wrestling talk as well, but one of the main things that I want to focus on is the cards mainly, just because I've been doing a lot of collecting on it as well, and that way we'll kind of build out a little schedule as we go. So for this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming 2023 Metal Universe that should be coming in the next couple of months here. Again, we'll take it all with a grain of salt since it is Upper Deck and we've had some issues with the release dates on this. And also we're going to talk about 2024 Flagship, which was just announced and we already got a little bit of information from the sell sheet on that. And since we don't have the checklist, we won't be able to do a deep dive on those yet, but when that checklist becomes available, then we'll definitely go into that. Let me start off here with 2023 Metal Universe. So this is coming on the heels of the previous year's Metal Universe, which is the first one that Upper Deck has done. I do have some concerns and some things I want to talk about with the product, but I'm definitely going to have a separate video talking about concerns, kind of the current state of where I think things sit with uh, as far as AEW wrestling cards and maybe just wrestling cards in general. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and we'll definitely talk about that because I've got some thoughts on where things sit today. But starting off here, looking at this one, obviously all the art and everything reflects how things were quite some time ago, and which tends to be the case, but obviously all these talents, at least in this case, are all still with the company, so that's kind of helpful as far as a lot of these AEW sets, and that's why the checklist, I think, will be interesting to me when the checklist actually becomes released, because we'll see if Jade Cargill makes it onto that checklist. I would assume by now CM Punk is no longer going to be on these checklists, but you never know. And as always, whenever we look at a lot of these pictures and these mock-ups, you take them with a grain of salt, because by the time it actually comes to release... It could be a completely different image or a completely different setup in the way these cards end up coming. So the first thing I want to look at here when we're starting off is that obviously one of the main focus is going to be your PMGs. So you're going to have your base set, you're going to have your ba what they call the base pinfall short prints, one in two packs, and base indispensable SPs, which I'm not too familiar with what that is, but that's one in five packs. So we've got two different levels of short prints on the base set to start off with. And then of course we've got the precious metal gems. We're gonna look at that here in a second. And one of one printing plates, pretty standard stuff if you're familiar with a lot of Metal Universe and the hockey side of things, because Upper Deck does that with Metal Universe and also some of the other products where they incorporate PMGs. So to start off with, you got your base PMGs, you got your red, green, and gold, which is basically exactly the same as the previous years. And here's a little example, a mock-up of what the design should look like. I don't have a problem with this design really. It looks kind of like a dartboard is kind of what I'm guessing with the character in the middle of it, which that should be fine. But where it becomes interesting to me is when we go into the next step here, because you're gonna have throw pack inserts. So you're gonna have 97, 98 championship retros, one in three packs, and then 2013 metal universe retros, which is a very different style when they kind of brought back the PMG concept and they have a very different design in terms of the way they approached it. And you can see here, just looking at the screen, that in 2013, if you look at the Metal Universe retros from that, so the base version of it is already very short print at one in 240 packs. But then you've got red PMG, but then you also add in a blue PMG out of 50, the green PMG out of 10, the gold out one of one, and of course the printing plates. So we're also adding in that blue one, which is very similar to on the hockey side. If you're familiar with that a little bit, that's kind of what they did with those and added another layer of PMG onto it. Again, when I get into the video talking about some concerns I have with it, this is consistent with what they've done in the past. So that I'm not super concerned about, but in general terms with how this is going to play into, I think how some of these products are going to be received, that's the question that I have that I'm going to be thinking about some more when we get into it. Now looking at the 97, 98 championship retros, we've got a very similar kind of thing. We're going to have the base insert, which is one in three packs. So that should be fairly available. Purple FX spectrum number to 199, red PMGs one out of 100, green out of 10, gold one of one and printing plates. So very similar configuration. This doesn't have the blue, but the 2013 metal retros does. Now I'm not going to go through every single insert on this. We'll do a little bit more of that when we get into the deep dive. But one of the big ones that I do want to call out that I, because I do like this one is the cut above. Big fan of that. One in 400 packs. I think that's a pretty good look. And obviously the mock-up here, we'll see what the final version looks like. But if you're familiar with the 90s ones, if they're able to come close to replicating that one, uh, I think when we'll do the deep dive, maybe I'll show a couple of real examples of what they look like in the past. If they can come close to replicating that, that should be a pretty cool looking card. It's going to be tricky, a little condition sensitive though, with the die cuts in terms of those edges and trying to get those right. That's going to be a big thing with that one. Energize uh, 1 in 20 packs. I think that's going to be probably a pretty cool looking one. I would expect them to use some of those foils. You can kind of get a sense of that in the mock-up. I think that'll actually be a pretty neat looking card. They tend to be pretty good at using technology for that. Then we got our Uno Dos Trios, which is, you know, related to the Trios Championships, which haven't really been emphasized on TV. And that's one of the downsides of having a product that is delayed a bit. bit. We're talking about a 2023 product. At least in the second half of this, we'll get into the year 2024 in the year 2024, but, you know, close enough, I guess, in this case. So we're looking at Blast Furnace, which we don't know what that's going to look like yet. Chopped Noise Boys, which is actually should be a familiar one if you're familiar with the hockey side of things that they've done in recent years. But that is a throwback to another 90s insert. 
Premium TV performers, don't really have an indication on that. Ring Heroes and Smooth, we'll definitely be interested in seeing what that looks like. EX Century, Essential Credentials Now and Essential Credentials Future. So one thing you can tell from this is that they are really going into the bag of all these different inserts and a lot of those related ones. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out with this kind of an audience because that's going to mean some of these character checklists are going to be pretty extensive, I would say. Again, I'll talk more about it when I get to the concerns piece in a separate video, but it'll be interesting to see what those checklists end up looking like. If you like collecting one of the more popular characters, you're going to, probably going to see a pretty hefty checklist for that. In addition to that, you got the Return of Jambalaya, which was a very nice set, uh, at least last time around, and from this mock-up should be pretty interesting. Metal X again, and then Premium Prospects, which is one in 19 packs, which is fine. Then from there, you get into your autographs, which were pretty tough to pull last time around. I think this is going to be one in about three boxes. So we'll take a closer look when we get into what the average box and average case looks like, but I, I would suspect this probably probably going to be very similar to that. Your base silver FX auto is going to be one in 120 packs. The indispensable silver, which is one of the subsets there, is going to be one in 720 packs. And the pinfall silver, one in 720. So the two short printed ones presumably have an autograph version, one in 720 packs. That's going to be pretty tough. In addition, you got your green FX out of 10 and your gold FX one of one versions. Very consistent with last time around. Obviously, you come a little something different, but they're very consistent. EX Century Autos out of 35 should actually be a pretty good looking card depending on how consistent they are with the previous EX Century. Those are pretty fun looking cards as far as that's concerned. Now your estimated release date for this one, and part of the reason I made this video now is that they're saying projected for February the 7th, so first week of February. If that's the case, then we should be seeing a checklist here in the next couple of weeks because usually within about two weeks out is when we uh, usually will get a full checklist. If that ends up being the case, then we'll do the deep dive video when that checklist does come out. Now what you end up with is seven cards per pack, 15 packs per box, and a 16 box case. So that's how you end up breaking down that configuration. And from there, your average box looks kind of like this. 15 base SP cards, five 97 to 98 championship retro inserts, three EX Century inserts. So we're gonna get a good look at a number of those in a box. One Energize insert, one Blast Furnace or Smooth Acetate. So that's the kind of insert they're gonna go for that. And then four additional inserts of some kind, either Chopped, Premium Prospects, Ring Heroes, and or Uno Dos Trios. So in terms of your average, that's basically what you're looking for with other things sprinkled in between. Now at the case level is where it gets a little bit interesting. They're saying for the case that you're looking at three autographs. So when I said earlier, it's going to be 16 boxes per case. So it's not even, it's actually worse than one in four boxes to get an autograph. So you're looking at three autographs on average. One Metal Universe Retros insert, which is pretty tough to come by. One Metal X, one green PMG, gold PMG, jambalaya, or printing plates, so some combination therein. Three additional inserts, premium TV performers, a cut above, or noise boys. Obviously with the ratios, that makes a lot of sense. Seven parallels of red PMG, blue PMG, and or EX Sentry, and one additional rare numbered card. That's what you can expect in a hobby case on average. So that gives you a little bit of a taste of what those will look like. And it'll be interesting to see how those breaks actually look like. Now, even though in the mock-ups themselves, they didn't include it, they do include here an image, a mock-up of the Metal X. Design-wise, I think that should be fine, but it is a little different than the previous years, but it's a continuation. They did have the Metal X insert last time around and they're gonna have it again here. Now, before I move on, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on. As I said, I'm gonna have a video where I'm gonna talk about concerns and all that. But one thing that's gonna be kind of interesting that I think is going to be very impactful on how this particular release is received is going to be the continuation of how the 2022 release is gonna be received. And even though that one's been out for some months, and that means it'll be less than a year, again, hypothetically, if this comes out at the proper release date, hypothetically, this will come out less than a year from the previous one. Now, what's going to still impact that other one, though, is that we still haven't gotten EPAC. And that's something I'll talk more about in that other video, where we don't have EPAC for Metal, we don't have EPAC for AEW Allure, and we don't have EPAC for 2023 flagship. And those things coming down the pipeline is going to have some impact on the rest of this. That's just the way, the nature of how this is going to go. And like I said, when I talk about the state of kind of where these AEW and wrestling cars are right now, that's going to be something definitely we're going to have to dig into a little bit more. But... Before we do that, let's go over to the other product that, we, that I wanted to talk about here in this video is that 2024 flagship. So they've managed to release this one uh, as far as at least giving us a breakdown of what we may be able to expect for 2024. Now, obviously in the same vein as the other one, obviously a lot of these mock-ups, you know, subject to change, but this will pretty much give us the breakdown of what we should expect. So obviously right from the top, we've got a little bit of a fun little interesting issue and that's mostly due to the delay. Sky Blue has obviously already taken a little bit of a character change, even though the character is technically still called Sky Blue. Darby Allen, of course, MJF is probably out for an extended period of time, which should be interesting. Jamie Hayter hopefully will be coming back at some point. And Brian Danielson there. So this, if the cover ends up sticking with this, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that works since a couple of these images are out of date. 
one, we're hoping that there's gonna be a return and the other one might not be around for a while, at least at the time that this is all going down. Now, looking forward here, one of the key pieces that I wanted to touch on is that there is gonna be a change in configuration because this is actually staying consistent with what's going on with the hockey side of it. And this is always important. Whenever I wanna get a little bit of a sneak preview of where some of this stuff is gonna go, all I have to do is go over look at the hockey side of things because flagship and a lot of these other products are available in the hockey side. So when Allure was going to come out, all I had to do was look over to what was going on in the hockey end of it. And you could borrow, you could assume that there was going to be some elements borrowed from it. And there were, and that's one of those things where you get a little bit of a sneak preview of where things are going to go. In this case, it's that the hobby boxes are shifting over to 12 packs per box and 12 cards per pack. So you're getting 144 cards per box which is gonna be interesting in terms of how that changes because it's noted here in the article and for all these cardboard connection ones, I will include links to these in the description for you to check it out for yourself, is that in the 2022, you had 128 cards. It was actually a very small amount of cards inside the box. They changed that in 2023 with 24 packs and eight cards, which is 192. And now we're shifting it back down kind of in between, but it follows with that whole 12 and 12 thing that has now taken over in flagship. And that's the new norm, quote unquote, with Upper Deck and their flagship product. And it's carried over here into the AEW version of it. So as far as the base set is concerned, we start off very similarly to the previous years. We start off with wrestlers from one to 70, tag team slash trios from 71 to 90, and then the crew from 91 to 100. I'll talk more about that in that other video again with concerns and that piece of it. We do bring in the outburst parallels, which is something that is actually directly related. Uh, you, if you wanna see what those look like, you can check it out on the hockey side of it. If I can find one that quickly for you, I may just throw it here on the video just so you can see what that looks like from the hockey end of it. And you can kind of extrapolate it into this design and you should be able to get a pretty good idea what more than likely it'll end up looking like. They also added here a gold pyro one, which should be kind of an interesting combination. You've got that pyro desi foil design to go along with numbered out of 35. I think that's kind of fine. Here you've got that hobby boxes are averaging six gold parallels, three pyro parallels, and one outburst parallel per hobby box. And then you have the base ones with photo variants, one 480 packs as well. And you can see right from this list, we are really gonna be very heavy into the parallels. Just looking at this, you can get a bit of a gist of it. I'm not gonna read off all the different ratios and everything for you, but you can see there's gonna be a lot of parallels. Uh, and it's depending on how the characters go and if any of them duplicate. I don't think so. I think they've been pretty good about that. Although with tag teams, maybe there will be some duplication there. If you do collect a certain character, though, you're going to be looking at a lot of different parallels here. All the way down to the Outburst Gold, one of ones. But then you've got the Return of High Gloss. You've got Gold Pyro, which is going to be out of 35. The Exclusives are going to be back. Dynamite. You've got a Steel Cage out of 599. Clear Cut is going to be back from 2023. So you've got, you're gonna have a pretty heavy mix of different ones that you're gonna be looking and chasing after. So again, I'm thinking the checklists are gonna be pretty extensive, especially for some of the more popular characters. And that's not even taking into account photo variations and other, and if there's any other Easter eggs. This one here is AEW Heroes and Heroines in kind of a comic book style. Not a huge fan of that piece of it, but it is consistent with other products that you've seen. This flying through the air is a lenticular one. So one in 52 packs, so that's pretty okay. And there's some short printed versions in that checklist at one in 384 packs. The whole lenticular thing actually looks pretty nice. I've seen some good execution with 2023 flagship. So hopefully that is continued. And if they do a good job with the design, this mock-up only gives us a bit of a taste, but if they can follow it something like that, I think that should be pretty good. AW posters at one in 15 packs, revisits key pay-per-view events and techniques by Taz, seeks input from the wrestler himself. That feels very much like the Excalibur one. Uh, it feels like just a continuation of we had Excalibur's picks and now you got Technique by Taz. feels like very similar in terms of that. I feel like one just swap, got swapped out for the other. And then we've got We Are Global, one in 15 packs, highlighting the international aspects. So I think um, this almost feels redundant because we did have the lenticular one. I forget. It was like World Tour. I, I, I'll, I'll pull up one of the images and show it to you on the, on the screen there. But you had that one, which was the lenticular one, which is very tough to pull. And then you've got the We Are Global, which is hitting on the global angle again. And we've got that at 115 packs, which is fine. But, uh, but I just say like, it feels a bit redundant since we literally had in 2023, uh, a virtually similar concept, but obviously that one was a much tougher pull. Moving on from there, we've got a look at Dazzlers and UD Canvas. So continuation from the previous, which is fine. Uh, hopefully crossing my fingers, hopefully the sky blue one in this case for the mock-up, uh, hopefully the sky blue one maybe gets updated to reflect the current. I, it might be too, it might be a little too late in the cutoff. I, I guess it depends on how much time they've got because they are shooting for the summer here. And I'll touch on that here at the end, but if we don't have enough lead time, we may miss out on the current iteration of sky blue, which would be kind of interesting. It'd be kind of fun to have that incorporated into it, but I guess we'll have to see what images they end up using. And I do have some thoughts on the whole image selection portion of it, which I'll talk about in that subsequent video when we get to it. So you've got the insert breakdown and it's multi-tier. You got a lot of that examples like that. So you can see very similar to 2023, you got different levels in a lot of cases. So like technique by task, for example, your base insert is one in 15 and then your foil board is numbered. 
And in some cases you've got a gold spectrum and a foil board in a couple of different spots. It just kind of depends on where you've got it. And you've got multiple versions of Dazzlers and more than likely you'll have a retail version, very similar to the way 2023 worked out. Moving forward, you've also got the chase inserts, quote unquote, which is your acetate debuts, one in 600 packs. AW Breakouts is back, but this time it's numbered out of 99. So they did change that up a little bit. AW Retouched Cards. So I'll be curious to see what that one kind of looks like, what kind of change they did with that one. Day with the Belt is back, and then an MJF Retrospective, which is interesting, uh, given uh, the whole way that a lot of the stuff is going on with storylines and, and that. So we'll have to see how that one plays out. Now, you do have autographs and relics included in it. So your tag team autographs here, one in 2,000 packs. That does feel a little bit long odds as far as that is concerned, but all right, interesting. You are keeping it as kind of a tough hit. Your wrestler autos, your base autos are one in 110 packs, so kind of what you would expect in the past. So now bear in mind that you've got 12 packs in every box, and you're doing a base auto of one in 110 packs. So that's going to mean that the base auto is going to be pretty tough. There's going to be a lot of different versions of it, the crew autos, the tag team autos. A lot of these are very long odds. And then you've got your three-piece trios, continuing kind of the trios theme here, a number to 49 or less. Very similar to the tag team ones as well, so you've got a lot of those things going on. The relics are pretty tough as well. So it's stay pretty consistent. They're a little bit stingy with a lot of the autographs and the relics, which has some good sides and some bad sides. I can make a bit of an argument for both cases, but it is kind of interesting. Now we do include here, not so much as an Easter egg, but in this case, it's noted right here. New Chase hits consist of 2023 AW buyback autos. So we've got those numbered to 10. So it feels like the numbering is starting to go down a lot of these. And then canvas buybacks, AW wrestler plus pay-per-view logo manufactured patches. So we'll definitely have to see what that one ends up looking like. That'll be a little bit interesting. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, your configuration is 12 cards per pack, 12 packs per box, and then 12 boxes per case. So they're going 12, 12, 12 to stay with that kind of consistency. Your hobby box average is looking like one autograph, memorabilia, or tech card. I would expect a lot more memorabilia and tech cards involved in that. A lot of tech cards. Two numbered cards, six base gold, three base pyro, one base outburst, four UD canvas cards, three gaming inserts and three dazzlers. Now in this case, I assume the gaming inserts is probably gonna be a replacement for the playing cards one. Although I did kind of like the playing cards one. And I think the, the whole gimmick of having the 52 cards and actually be able to build a real playing deck, I think is pretty cool. But I'll reserve judgment to what these gaming inserts look like and we'll have to see what that how that one plays out. As mentioned earlier, I think one of the key pieces is gonna be, I'm hoping that we're gonna get some cool lenticular cards, very similar to last time around. It looks on paper like this could be a pretty good one. They did a pretty good job with it last time. And here's an example of Dazzlers where you're showing Julia Hart already fully in the House of Black, which is great. That's uh, They've made that update the last couple of series. So hopefully these uh, end up being pretty good looking cards. And I think that's a good call. And hopefully we get some updates on some of the additional characters that have at least shown some change since the previous versions. Now that concludes a rundown of these two sets. I did want to start off by as kind of a first look, do a little bit of a rundown of these. This is kind of an unofficial part one because in a kind of a part two, I'll be talking about the current state and also some thoughts on these upcoming sets and some thoughts on the re most recent sets that we've had. The last three that have come out in the last several months give us a little bit of an indication of where things sit right now. And I do have a couple different thoughts on that and I want to do a little bit of a breakdown on that. With that said, this will be it for this video. We'll be doing more videos upcoming uh, talking about, as I said, wrestling cards, but we'll also talk some wrestling here when some things warrant it. I am going to take advantage of the channel being here so that I can talk about some of those things in this place. And we'll see if we can bring back some of those other elements uh, from my other channel into this one so this can be a place for all the wrestling card and wrestling talk to happen the plan is to start ramping up things again and include some more content on here if you like to hear some of that i would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more upcoming thanks very much and we'll catch you in the next one <laughs>